Welcome back to my homestead kitchen. Today's project is something I'm so excited about and something that I've been looking forward to ever since we harvested our first deer here on our land. And what we're gonna be making today is tallow candles. And while most people probably make it out of beef tallow, which you can definitely do, I'm gonna be making it out of deer tallow that I rendered down myself. And making your own candles is so easy. Once you see me make it, you'll be golden and be able to jump in and replicate it and impress all your friends along the way. And the thing that I love about making your own tallow candles is it's super inexpensive. Tallow is very cheap. I can get several pounds for less than 10 bucks from my local CSA or this was essentially free or I guess minus the hunting license. So super excited about that. It's also low toxin. If you look into our modern candles, they're made with petroleum products, soy flakes, you know, artificial fragrances, which are also associated with all sorts of terrible health outcomes like neurotoxicity and endocrine disruptors. No, thank you. Let's stick with the basics of what we've been using for centuries. Using tallow for candles has dated back even to the Roman times. So it's time that we get back to our roots and make it the real way. So this is all you're gonna need for supplies. It's pretty easy and basic when it comes to candles. So the most important is making sure that you can obtain some tallow. So if you, of course, hunt, definitely save the fat from the deer or a bear even can make nice candles. And if you don't, then you can get some tallow from a local farm. So in the description, I'll put some links on where you can get in touch with a local farm if you aren't already. And it does need to be rendered down. So tallow is the rendered form of deer fat or beef fat. And so if you can only find raw fat, which is my case with my local CSA, and of course with the deer I was faced with raw fat, you will need to render it down. And I also have a YouTube video showing how to walk you through that process. I'll make sure to link that in the description if you need to do the rendering process, which is also super easy and a great skill to learn. You're going to need a double boiler. So it's just this little pot inside a pot. So we're going to fill this with water to just gently heat the tallow. If you don't have one of these already, I'll make sure to link this in the description. Highly recommend this. I use it all the time for infusing herbs and making salves. It's just a great gentle way to heat things. You're going to need some heat stable containers. So you can just use your general mason jars. I love these. They're just cute and they're the perfect size. I'll make sure to link these as well. And then you're just gonna need some wicks. I love these, these are made of cotton. They're also really sturdy, so they're gonna stay centered in the jar well. And I bought the extra long ones cause I wanted to be able to fit these into any size candle. So I got the extra large, it's gonna be plenty long and then we'll just trim it to fit once we're done. Lastly, you can add some essential oils if you'd like for a scented candle. Just make sure that you're using a type of oil that has a high smoke point. So you definitely don't want to burn or scorch your essential oil. So cedar wood is good. Same with things like geranium, fir, sandalwood is good too. I'll make sure to provide some ideas in the description for you. So the first thing we're gonna do is get the double boiler going. I'm just gonna add an inch or two of water and get it heating. And while that water is heating up, we're also gonna warm up our oven. So we just want it on the lowest setting. So we're gonna warm up our jars. The last thing we wanna do is add hot tallow to cold jars. It could ultimately end up shattering them, which we don't wanna do. So my lowest setting is 250 and we'll get the jars in. And you may be noticing my flooring samples in the corner. I can't even wait. If you've been following along on this kitchen remodel project, you know how excited I am <laughs> to get this blue green carpet out of the kitchen and do something else. So that's gonna be easier to clean up and brighten up the space. So stay tuned on that. So my water is starting to boil away. So I'm gonna turn down the heat slightly and start pouring the tallow in. You might be wondering how much tallow you need for your candle, it's kind of a guessing game, and of course it totally depends on the type of container that you're using. So for my eight ounce glass jars, I'm gonna use roughly like a cup of tallow for it. So I'm just gonna eyeball it. If you have extra at the end, you can just pour it back in the container and it'll cool. So better to overshoot it than undershoot it. I'm doing three candles. Now I don't think three cups of tallow is gonna fit in here. So we'll need to do a couple different batches, but that's okay, it won't take that much time. So I just use, like a, to use a fork and take chunks out. We'll see how far we get. I 
almost forgot, now is the time to add your essential oils if you're gonna be adding a little bit of a scent to it. Again, I'm using cedar wood as a really high smoke point or scorching point, so I think this is gonna be nice. I'm gonna put about 50 drops in that much tallow. Okay, so I have my hot jars sitting out. I have a couple of my wicks. I'm not gonna trim them yet. We're gonna trim them later. If you have a hot glue gun, you can definitely add a little bit on there so that it stays centered. I have one, but I have no idea where it ended up after the move. So we're just gonna make do. So I have a couple pencils. I think that's really gonna help keep it all centered. There we go. Great. So here we go, the moment of truth. I love this double boiler because it has a pour spout, so that's gonna be great. And hopefully not make too much of a mess. So my wick is falling over already, but that's okay, we can make adjustments. It's not gonna harden immediately. And I may not quite have enough tallow to finish this candle, which is also fine. We can melt a bit more and top it off. Awesome. Let's go melt some more tallow. And while I'm waiting for that tallow to finish melting, I'm gonna go ahead and set up my third candle here. So it's nice and warm out of the oven. Have my straight wick. The pencil trick is working out really well. We're set, let's go grab the tallow. I think we're gonna have just enough. Awesome, I think we did it. So before we step away and let these cool, we need to do a double check and make sure that everything is centered because we don't want them to harden, not completely centered because then our candle won't, won't burn evenly. So this is kind of hard to do one-handed. There we go. So we're looking good. It'll probably take about an hour. I know they look kind of golden now, but once the tallow hardens, it'll be that nice pure white again and they're just gonna be gorgeous. So. We'll step back in once they're totally cooled. So these are looking pretty good. They're not 100% cool, but they are close enough. I'm kind of in a rush because it's Ryan's birthday. He just turned 41 and we want to go do some fun stuff. So we're going to move this along. So next we need to trim that wick, right? So this is very long. So the ideal length for a wick is a quarter of an inch. So I'm just gonna take my scissors and you know, just eyeball it, do your best. And this is a pretty thick wick. So, ooh, and it's moving a little bit. So I don't wanna ruin my candle, but okay. I think I need both hands. Okay, success. I had to go get some different scissors. So that's about what you're looking for. I'd recommend letting them cool a little bit more. These two are still pretty soft because this is the one that I topped off and this is the fresh one. So I'm not gonna touch those yet, but at least you can see one finished one. Well, that was super fun. I think these turned out super cute, very practical. These would make great gifts as well. And I love that it's a toxin-free candle, something I can feel good about burning in my home. And if you would like more detailed information or a printable recipe for my tallow candles, I have a blog post on it that I'll also link in the description below so you can check that out as well if you'd like. And if you still have some extra tallow left over, definitely check out my YouTube video on making your own whipped tallow balm. So it's essentially a nourishing lotion that I absolutely love. I've been making it for years. Highly, highly recommend. Thanks so much for being here. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll catch you on the next video.